the library board of trustees meeting to order. Uh, start with uh, roll call. District one. Present. Ken Logan. District two. Present. District three. Present. District four is present here. And district five. Present. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, we're open for public comments if anyone wishes to address the board. Okay, okay then we'll go on to approval of the minutes from March 21st. Uh, I make a motion to approve the Boundary County Board of Trustees um, minutes for regular meeting March 21st of 2024. Okay, we have a second. I second. Okay. We had a second on the, for meeting from last month on the meetings. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Meetings approved as presented. Uh, okay. New business. We set our date for a public budget hearing for for fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Any discussion on that? We have a suggested date. Our regular board meeting is August 15th. And we usually do in August, right? Yeah. We always yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. That gives yeah. us time to do the other things that have to happen afterwards before okay. yeah. it all kicks in. So that gives us plenty of time to get the what's in the two. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do it a special meeting hour as part of our regular meeting. Well, that's always a good yeah. meeting. Just just focus on that. So we want to just plan on uh, that hearing on our regular meeting date in August. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, got a motion for that. I'll make a motion to set the date for our public budget hearing 2024-25 for August 15th at our regular meeting. Uh, and second. Oh. Okay, so we have a proposal for uh, our, for a meeting date on August, regular meeting date uh, for public budget hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Plan on that meeting on, on a regular meeting in August. Okay, we are next agenda item of second take. Patron Melinda Brickman reconsideration. Uh, what do we have for information on that? She's one of my um, constituents, I guess, from my my district. So she reached out to me in an email under our new reconsideration policy and spoke to me about having her. Um, Privileges reinstated. The the last thing they had left to do, as, as far as we know, she's paid off. Yeah, all her, her totally clear. All of her yeah. dues to the library. So the last step was for her to come before the board and explain what had happened. And um, long story short, the 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 kid is at now college that <laughs> the original incident happened oh, to. Yeah. So uh, you know the the. Boundary exchange since then, and she just wants to get privileges back so she can borrow books okay. from the Boundary County Library again and have her privileges reinstated. So I'm here on her behalf to say, you know, to present that to the board and say she should have them reinstated. Okay, so we have a second on that for her reconsideration. I second that. Okay, uh, all in favor of, is there any further discussion by anyone? Okay, all in favor of reinstating um, Melinda Brickman, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay, we'll go on to our Emergency Protocols and Procedures Committee. Uh, take that lead. Well, Lynn and I have been talking about putting together a plan of what to happen if certain emergencies occur at the library. And I think uh, the thing to do would probably make, get together with the committee and maybe have 
Uh, Lynn and a library staff member, and then a couple of board members, and we'll hammer out some um, rules of the road. If an emergency comes up, protocols that things happen, um, and do a little more serious look into what other people are doing in their library to try and apply it to our library. Um, <clears throat> and just get a feel for the whole problem because. You know, in emergencies, lots of different stuff can happen, so you have to have lots of different plans. And I think the thing, the best thing we can do to help the staff is give them, not our best guess, but you know, the communal best guess of what to do if something happens. And so uh, it's going to involve, uh, you know, maybe incorporating some people from the community. We talked about uh, Brian Zimmerman and... Oh. Dave Kramer as, you know, somebody to talk to about police stuff and yeah, just a general idea. And I think it's gonna be, it would be nice to make it a committee so it could be a little more focused and gather more information and then present kind of a, like we're doing with all the policies and stuff, just kind of a final list to the board for us to go over there and talk about it, if that makes sense. Yep. And I, I'd be willing to be on it if somebody else wanted to be, and then we'd have two members on the board okay. members on the committee, and I don't know, we'd have to put together a list of the people, you know, reach out and contact the people soon, see who we could get to come in. And maybe even do pre presentations, or I don't know exactly how it's going to work. Is that kind of the way the board would yeah. want to proceed on that? Is that yeah. What was that yeah? What was the the rules with doing a public meeting for those committee type meetings? Were those? It's, you have to do the open meeting law. You post it. And yeah. And then, yeah. 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 And then, so the, so it was just like we did with the just like we did with the reconsideration policy and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that would be the other thing, and we're going to talk about it later on the list, is a uh, training that kind of goes into that. Ah! So, and that the trainings we've been to before have all been done by ICRM, but this, this training that they're talking about later in the meeting is, is from the Idaho Commission for the Library sponsors the, what's that guy we're going to have? Oh, Clay. Clay, yes. yes. And kind of go through stuff like that. Actually, it was in our handouts. Sorry. Yeah, and the the email that he sent me about getting together with us, I believe that's in June. Yeah, June. 24th, I made a copy of it and so. stuck it in your packets. Yeah, and he's wide open. I did write back to him and tell him that Lee and I were interested in doing that. He's really excited to come and meet with us, and he wants to meet up here. Part of part of his thing is to come and see our library. He's not. His information, well, there's a list. He sent a list of all the different kinds of information that he has and that he's willing to share. So he might have some insight too. Yeah, for sure. But uh, if, if we got together uh, the two board members and whoever else is on the committee, it would have to be an open meeting. Yeah. We would have to set it up and be public about it. Unless, <coughs> unless you have a couple members that just wanted to go out on their own and bring it back to the board individually or something but we could do it yeah I, I don't you, you almost have to reach out to get yeah I don't feel like to me there would be a lot of expertise involved yeah. in this yeah. and, and right. making it flow smoothly and be correct and something we could use consistently so I think the thing to do would be you know it might gather information as individuals and then come together and lay it all out on the table and kind of hash through it. You know, it takes a little longer, but I think it's a little better product. Right. In the end. Okay. I agree. So, uh, Lee's volunteered for being one of the committee members for that. We have another member that wants to volunteer. That would be three. Three, two, 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 for for the like, we would call it the safety committee. Sure, sure. And we could call it the safety committee. But you would be on the committee. I would. I can, I can do it if I don't know what my schedule is going to.
pertain to right now. Right. But um, I can sit there and, and help help out a little bit, and be involved. Okay. Um, it's just related to work and doctor stuff. So. Okay. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and uh, form a committee then for uh, emergency protocols with Lee and Ken as the representatives on that meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess we need a motion for that. Or? I guess it's an action item, so I guess so. So to have a motion for, I'll make the motion that we form a committee for the emergency protocols and procedures committee with uh, Lee and Ken uh, being the committee members for that. Do we have a second? Sure, I'll second. Okay. Um, so we have, <clears throat> we have a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor of forming a subcommittee to over the emergency protocols and procedures committee with Lee and Ken as the board members say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, we'll move on to amendments to the personnel policy in regards to safety protocols. on that uh, or all right so um I this started back uh, with Kimber as the director and uh, one of their things was to go through all the different policies and, and kind of update them so that they reflect what we're currently seeing and uh, it, was, it went to the back of the burner when we did the reconsideration stuff and I just dug it out um, I don't know, a week ago, I think. And uh, so basically, what Kimber and I sat together and, and I was like, what does the personality policy look like? What should it have in it? And what I did is I went to the iCrimp website and they have like a blanket, boilerplate personnel policy. Right. And ours was very similar. I mean, I cut and pasted a few things. And then um, kind of the last hang up was trying to figure out some of the wording of the things that we specifically wanted in, our, in the personnel policy. And do you guys each have a page of, okay, so the first one you're gonna come to is uh, uh, under the prohibited contact, con prohibited conduct portion of the policy. And this stems from an incident at the library specifically, and then I talked directly to Wilson about it, Tim Wilson, the lawyer. And basically what Tim said is, it is, as a library, if somebody brings a weapon and represents the library, then we're basically condoning that weapon as a library employee. And uh, I wanted to not have that happen. So, so we included in the personnel policy, basically all employees or volunteers when representing the library in an official capacity while on duty will not carry a weapon as defined by Idaho Code 183302 sections 2B through 2E. And I, I have those here if we wanna go through it, but, but basically it's, it's knives over six inches and, and things that are, you know, it's like a large knife. Large knife. And, and then there's there. a comment in there about cleavers that are used for food and stuff like that are not considered a right. weapon. But so the idea is to get, and, and to me it was easiest to use Idaho code, get a way to determine what a weapon is right. and basically say that we shouldn't have them. Library employees or volunteers should not have them when they're representing the library at the library. And so that you know, that's basically all we're adding there. It's just a clear direction. Does that kind of make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, mine's not sort of the same. 16, page 16. Page 16, yeah. Yep. Or page 15. Um, so, 
again, this, this came directly from personal trouble we were having. It says, um, I don't have that one. So it's uh, following steps should be followed. It's basically a opportunity to be heard hearing. Oh, I think you do. It's page 16. It's, it's, it's page 16. 16. Under your packets. Number yours are oh, well, I messed up. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not right, sure right, why, right. but. Okay, I'm fine. So basically what was happening is uh, we needed to limit the amount of times that we could we can have or we agree to this opportunity hearing. So right. so they basically they can they get assigned a hearing date and then they can change it once, but they can't change it infinite. Right. right. So we had to say that. We did now we did amend that back in June of twenty two. Oh we did? Yeah. When and I, and that's the same when I went through the policy again after you and I had talked some of these things have been approved in that June meeting. Um, not all of them, though. Okay. So it would be the easiest thing for you all at this point is, is just to go ahead and approve these changes rather than trying to figure out what we did and what we didn't change. Because okay. there are some things, and even down to tiny little words, that are different in this one. That's fine. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look and in. It's, it's no. not, to go over it again but yeah they'll be yeah. double approved yeah exactly yeah. Um, um then the next one is is on page i guess it would be 17 for you guys right, right. uh it's an add-on that basically says the employee must notify the director within two <coughs> business days of the day of the notice that he she intends to provide a written response okay so related to this is the start of this so it talks about the Two business days, but then there's other areas that talks about like um, H, which is downloadable. Below it says 24 hours, and then it says five business days. Right. So if it's in red, that means it's going out. If it's in green, that means it's going in. Okay. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. Probably should have started yep. with that. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Start. That's fine. That I'm, 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 I'm just as just long as it's just constant. Right. To the right. Yeah. That's okay. right. I'm fine. Prior to. Prior to. Yeah. So my understanding is the red is what's currently in there and the green is what we would like to put it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in G, we would, we would change it to the hearing if chosen will be conducted with the board and the director and will last no longer than one hour. That's, that's that change. And then in H, um, the employee must give the director notice at least five business days before the hearing she he intends to have an attorney present. And that's just to clear up a little language there. Um, the members of the board and the director may ask questions, may ask the employee questions, and that's at the hearing. Okay. And where that just said the director. It did. Yeah. It said board. And it seems like, yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. And then in M, it went to the director will render a written decision after considering employees' responses. And that just made sense to me because that's one person that's, that has all the information. Well, their overall control. Oh, right. And they're in charge. Right. Right. And that's what we had before, too. Oh, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and then in N, it says, uh, Failure to participate in the opportunity to be heard constitutes a failure to exhaust administrative remedies under this policy. Therefore, the opportunity to be heard will be vacated and deemed waived. That's so true. unless you follow all the time frames, right. we're not going to have And then on D, a district employee is just to clarify because district is defined as the library at the first part of the document. So, yeah. so we know who we're talking about. I have a question on this. Okay. So, because it's not highlighted, but there's it's used in through this whole document. So it talks about dishonesty, immorality, or criminal misconduct. So the word criminal uh, is, you know, how is that defined and how is that approached? Because for us to make any decisions, because when you get farther into it, mm -hmm. that uh, if there's a criminal criminal element to it, where is the lawyer that represents us? At the well, when you start going through this and you get into the other to where uh, name hearing uh, 
to where they get into challenge allegations of dishonesty, immorality, criminal misconduct. So again, now that the criminal. So it's just the, it's some of the wording. I just want to get clear on that um, because for us to sit there and uh, determine certain things about criminal without the, our lawyer present is an issue. Yeah. So, so I don't think we determine criminal mis Doesn't that come from like the- Just allegations of criminal misconduct. Right. So, right, but we're gonna be hearing and we're gonna be discussing and we're gonna make judgments. So, I just wanna- Yeah, previously that reads, all employees have the right to a post decision hearing in the event the employees demoted with a reduction in pay, suspended without pay, or dismissed from employment for reasons related to job performance or contact features. Yeah, see that doesn't talk about anything related to criminal. Well, that actually sounds clearer than what is here. Yeah, so th that's that's what I want to just make sure because that, that criminal wording in there, like we need to make sure that our representative is, you know, that we're not doing anything out of. Well, I would rather use what. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that, that, that makes that, that, that makes, makes more sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is what we approved before. So. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is, is what I have in here new then? Uh, the it's in it our, yes. Is, is yeah. It? Okay. So if we just take that out and go with the old policy word, wordage, and I can look that up. Okay. And if, uh, as we go along, if you just point that out to me, I can. Yeah, that was just that. Yeah. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, so, yeah, down there, let's see what that's. That's in number, number three, the very next yep. page for me. Yep. So, you just basically want that out of that in? I think that, well, if you, <coughs> one thing to sit there and have it in. But as a board, we need to make sure that our, <clears throat> if there's any decisions being made that um, related to anything related that talks about the criminal element of it, we need to have our lawyer present. So you're not actually saying that you don't want it in there, you're saying that maybe we should have something in there that says, if it is talking about this sort of thing, the lawyer, our lawyer will be Correct, present. correct, because we shouldn't be making judgments and stuff like that without our representation. Yeah. So that means we need to add something, not take away that phrase, right? Um, well, the, the earlier phrase sounds sound pretty good, but so it's just it's one of those so things that's like, uh, we need to sit there and run that by even our, our attorney, just for that clarification, you know, because you're gonna put it in a written form. What do you, which one are you referring to on that? Which uh, letter, number? Well, so, when you, it's basically when you're sitting there using the word, the, the phrase criminal misconduct. Oh. It's like, you gotta be careful about that, you know, because if there are certain things to talk about, <clears throat> so name clearing, and, and so under his name clearing uh, is an opportunity for one's name to be, uh, one's name, and not to and not to challenge the underlying um, termination decision, allegations of dishonesty, immorality, criminal misconduct are the only issues that will be heard in this procedure. So, who's you know when you say heard, who's that representative? This is a name clearing hearing. So the the employees already been re fired based upon allegations of dishonesty immorality or criminal misconduct. They've already been fired because of one of those reasons. And so this is their opportunity to present evidence against that. So, you know, the assumption has been made that we had a lawyer who's already said, yes, this person has committed a crime and we have fired them because, you know, they pocketed every copy of Tom Sawyer. That's where our current policy is reading. You know, so, so, 
this is required a name clearing hearing. We, we require to do that if somebody has been fired because of one of those things, they have the opportunity to do this. You know, I, I think um, I, I think those words are used on purpose because you know that is legal language somewhere. You know that 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 triggers a name clearing hearing. Um, so you know, to be perfectly honest, I I am fine with the the changes here, and I can, I can pass it through just like that. That is what we proved earlier. Yeah. yeah. So then C it says uh, the name uh, name clearing hearing will be set for the next regular meeting. Uh, of the board, the employee will be given 30 minutes to respond to allegations of dishonesty, immorality, and misconduct. The employee may present argument or documentary evidence at that hearing. So now you're going to have that documentation of that to sit there and clear their name. From that. Yeah, so they have, I mean, they have an opportunity to be heard before the decision, and then they have the opportunity to be heard yet again after the decision just to say, Here's why I think you're wrong to clear my name. And this, but this is good because this, you know, this puts in the language that says, um, this is a name clearing hearing is an opportunity to clear one's name and not to challenge the underlying termination decision, right? So we're, we're already covered in that case. And if they, you know, if, if, if they would like to bring a case against us, then that goes to, you know, that goes to the water provided by our insurance provider on that. Why don't you go click on that page on that same page that says the Idaho rules of evidence do not apply to this hearing? So this is not okay. Okay. this is not an evidentiary hearing, this is just a I mean, okay. all and, and I think that is an right. opportunity to be heard. Is all that criminal all those first three things have already been decided before we get to this point. In okay. Here. Yep. But you have the right to, to tell everybody why. Okay. No, I haven't I haven't found any change that I am, am unhappy with in this stuff. Okay. And that's schedule B on this next part. Is that just confusing? Schedule B on this next part. Page twenty six. I've already okay. taken this forward, so I don't know. Aaron, they're all the way forward. <laughs> that's my next set of changes that I'm What's it about? Is it the FMLA stuff? No, it's the... Oh, oh, it's the <coughs> week. Okay, so, um, right. Uh, this was a change in policy that the board approved, I don't know how long ago. Under Craig. Under Craig. And um, when I talked to uh, Kimber about this, you know, she basically wanted it removed. And I didn't, I don't know a thing about it. So then I brought it to Lynn and and she and I talked about what this means, what Schedule B actually means. And uh, she is of opinion that it should probably be removed. And I would direct any, because I, to me, this is the difference between a, a permanent and a, and, a, and a temporary, or however you want right. to view it, employees. And- um, yeah, exempt or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so in, in my history, I was a temporary employee for the Forest Service for a long time. We didn't get any of these benefits. So, you know, it's kind of like the carrot and the stick. You know, mm -hmm. if you last long enough to get a permanent employment, part of the carrot is you get some of these benefits. But, you know, I, I would defer to Lynn as far as explaining her view on it. It doesn't fit with anything we've ever done before as far as um, every single one of us that have been there for a number of years were hired with the understanding that you get your paycheck and you get a raise per fiscal year. Um, if you were after benefits, such as they are, that required you giving more time to the library, which requires you being more serious about having a job at the library. And so the trade-off of that is, and now you get Percy, which we automatically have to pay anyway, once they go over a certain amount of hours. And in addition to that, you get sick leave and you get vacation pays. And we already have that. 
to try to give that to people that are really just there for the money. Or, I mean, the reality is, you're not going to make a living at it working part time in the library. You're not. If that's what you're after, then, then that's a whole other level of hourly commitment. I mean, so this Schedule B was offered to the part time employees, and we're just going to ask that. So if you're just a part timer, you're not getting, you know, you're not going to work your way up. So sure. in, in five years to get two days of vacation. <laughs> that is, but that is, gen yes, in five years, generally if you've been there that long, you're a good worker, you like what you're doing, you've been given more and more responsibility. At that point, you would go to them and say, hey, you want more hours? I, I'm going to fit you into the budget so that all of this comes with it. Right. Um, Do we make them more into a full-time employee? Right. Well, well, Percy starts at 20 hours a week. Okay. And as soon as Percy starts, all the rest of us does too. Okay. So that's always been okay. the yardstick. You know, if we're paying into Percy, then you also get vacation and sick days. So it's still part time. Twenty hours is still part time. You're not there forty hours a week. But 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 the, it has a lot to do with the commitment yeah. and the way you're doing your job. Would, would you rather have more twenty hour employees or more eight hour employees? You know. Over the years, the way I've seen it work best is to have a balance of both, quite frankly. Yeah. You know, because in that way, it gives people an opportunity who are maybe interested in working at the library, or like I said, just want pocket change or a little bit extra after retirement, to come in and, and be that way with the job. It's, I do the books, I put stuff away, I interact with people, and then I go home, yeah. as opposed to... They're essentially volunteering for their education right? And, uh, <laughs> well, no, you, you, you gotta have the commitment to Right. To do it right. Let's nope. just say that. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Now, now our current employees that are in this category, uh, they received this policy, is that correct? They did. So but our current this is this is why this is an important thing right now. Our current employees that are in that category have just barely tipped over into the first But I'm just wondering we're cha we're changing uh, kind of a contract with the employee. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering the ones that we currently have, whether or not we would have, I wonder if we should have Tim take a look at that and see if there's yeah. some liability there for us to say, no, you can't, How many? you know, because when they, when we hired them, this was in their yeah. policy. It right? was, but and now we're not, now we're saying we'd like to take it out, okay. but, uh, which we could for new employees, but I'm just saying on existing employees, I would want to get Tim's take on that before and I that's fine. Well, um, I go ahead on that. The, the thing that's an advantage for us at this point is that our current employees that fall under that are right at that year-long thing. So they're already under the radar as far as us being able to pay that to them anyway. So if, if Tim said, well, you have this person, they've been here a month past this limit, then we would pay them, we could pay them for that month. Or give them that day. But we are changing the terms for when they hire them. So I just, I just like to get. They definitely have to yeah. sign off on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have definitely have to show them. It. Yeah. So at, at the front of the policy, under your under your relationship with the district, which I have is page four, and the paragraph says, the district revert, reserves the right to modify any of the policies, benefit offerings, and procedures, including those covered in this policy, at any time, without prior notice to and consent of district employees. And that's pretty boilerplate for all policy statements is we, we as the employer can rewrite the policy as we see fit. So it's not, I mean, we can still have a good attempt, but I'm pretty sure that's the paragraph that lets us do whatever. When, when you change that, then, I mean, when you change something like that, you have to let them know. We do, we give them notice and they'll, right. if we, like if we agreed today and, and signed right. this policy, we would have, it would go to all the employees that right. are currently right. at the library and they would have to sign up. Right. These changes, yeah. On these yep. changes. And it would be, it would go to them, you know, the same way it goes to you so that they, the things that are different would be highlighted so they could see it and then we would, you know, we're not trying to pull fast. We're yeah. just trying no, to. No, I just want to make sure we don't have a liability there. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I, I, we, have, we can certainly, yeah. we can certainly take it to Tim, but I'm pretty sure that paragraph right there just covered. It also says it's prorated to the end of the fiscal year when you've been there for six months to a year. So, so that's what I'm trying to say is that's where our our newly hired part time people still sit. 
Is that right. six months to a year? But they still, you know, are eligible for <coughs> up to <coughs> two and a half days a vacation. of vacation if they've been there at least six months. Prorated to the end of the fiscal year. Right. So, yeah, we definitely have to work that out. And, yeah, we might end up saying, okay, you get two, two and a half days of paid vacation and then this goes away. Yeah, and that's the end of it. But, but that's why I think now, is, if we're going to do it, now is a really good time to do it. Sure. Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to say about this real quick is that um, as I was coming up through the ranks, I didn't have any of the benefits. The, the other side of that coin is because you don't get paid vacation days or any of the benefits, the expectation under when I started was, and therefore, if you need days off, they were going to make that happen. Yeah. knowing that you weren't going to get paid for those, but you need it for your family or you need to go to a wedding or whatever. So there's a give in that manner too, like, you know, this is my fun job, but I need to go do this this week. Can you make that happen? And as long as there was advanced notice and we could cover it, yeah, we made that happen yeah. all the time for those employees, as opposed to you only get this two weeks off. So what do you mean you want a month? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you were under the benefits package. Right. So so it's not like there's no advantage to having that situation happen. There's just not a package. Yeah. For what that's worth. Okay. So that's up to you guys, but so do we wanna take this by Tim? Uh yeah, I wouldn't uh mind running a vine just to make sure he's off the and this on it. Okay, then the next one is the, uh, the FMLA stuff. Yeah. And and basically, I took this directly out of iCrimps, boilerplate for cause, library uh, personnel policy. And um, it's exactly what they have uh, in there, except for the B, the section B where our employees are not eligible because we don't have more than 50. I made that a little more clear statement. And then um, uh, Wendy and Lynn were talking and they thought it would be good to add on, and you don't have a copy of this, it's not in your packet, but it says extended medical leave after, after that statement on B about since the district does not employ. So it would be extended medical leave will be considered by the director and or the board on a case-by-case -case basis. So basically the idea is we're we're not going to fund FMLA because you know we don't qualify, we, we don't qualify to fund FMLA, but we are uh, interested in, in helping our employees. So if something comes up that's that's catastrophic or you know whatever it is, we are willing to negotiate. I guess would be the way to look at yeah. it. Yeah, and, case case. And, and again, that goes back to we've always done that. We've right. always handled things that way. It just hasn't been in writing. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing is, if, if we don't have, my understanding of it is, again, if we don't have a statement in our policy about the FMLA, then we support it 100%, which we can't fiscally do. You know, we don't have the staff to do that and yeah. support it. So, um, I guess the next thing to do would be to go to Tim with this, and we can ask for clarification on the <coughs> statement and the clarification on whether or not we can do this on the schedule, the change in schedule B. And then I would bring it to the board whenever yep. I get that done, and we'll, we'll talk about it again. Okay. Okay. I think a lot of that's a question. question. Mm -hmm. well, I'll, I'll talk okay. About so, so I'll, I'll go through them all. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll sort them and send Tim, and then next time, hopefully, okay. I get a. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So we're going to postpone the vote on that then. Yeah, we'll postpone the vote. Yeah, I have a chance to. Okay. I guess 
so we'll move on to our next agenda item then uh, the mural proposal. We all had a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. Stay in discussion. Awesome. You know, but it's like it's one of those things that um, we can kind of work around in the in the development, you know, for things like that, or for any type of uh, building renovations and stuff like that. We can sit there and kind of work around that, I would imagine. But I think it's a pretty awesome. It'd be nice that you have one on the other side in the parking lot. Yeah, right. You know, do it both sides. Right. Those, but um, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty awesome. Is that the wall above the stairs there? It yes. is. Yes. So the yeah, the question is that's our soft corner, right? So uh I thought the other side was our soft corner. Can you try soft? The one like the children's section and the that's the one where the window gaps in the summertime, like it's kind no, of settling. No, that's on the other side, isn't it? <laughs> that's It'll be on the side facing the, the, It'll be the, the park. The only open corner of the building. But it's along the stairs, so that yeah. wall. Is that a See, soft, is that a soft corner? That's that's the that's the spot where Sandy said that they had to cable the building together. So that is like the weak point of the building, I thought. But there's when they there's built a, it? are you talking about when they built it? No, like later yeah, later on, like the building started gapping right there. Yeah, okay, I'm so sorry I know nothing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but some of that stuff like that what you're just bringing up, they can be done from the inside for any uh, if if we yeah. Places. If we do anything on the outside though, it's going to have to affect that. But I, I'm all for it. If they wanna if they wanna paint something on the side of the building, I'm fine with that right there. I would have a lot of questions that they would have to answer. Mm -hmm. How are they going to do this over the stairs, physically? Well, well uh, one, they're going to have to get a permit that. for, they're going to have to get a permit to actually do it. Are they? Uh, well, look, look at it this way, who's who's liable? I'm and that's exactly that what I said to him. Yep, yeah. who's liable? Yep. So you're gonna, they're going to have to get a permit from the city to sit there and do that, you know. Um, if the city doesn't issue it, then the, the yeah. county would have to do it's county property for the park. No, so, it's our property. Well, I know it's the city. That that's the aspect. But it's like we need to make sure that we're we're covered. If somebody they're going to put up a scaffolding, it'll they're be on be, our property because it'll be on the sidewalk. Okay, it'll be on the sidewalk. Goes right back there. to the same thing. It's like who takes on the insurance liability and risk management. I have nothing against them painting the mural, but we have to see, we have to see why yeah. And just for information's sake, when he originally approached me and we talked about it, those were the questions I brought up. You're talking about over the stairs, how are you going to do that? His answer was scaffolding. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. That's a great idea. Who's going to be on the scaffolding? Oh, the volunteers that are coming to paint it. Who is that? Art students and some veterans. Okay, who's going to take on the liability of it? That's, you brought up a good point right there because being that you are a county property, that if they're above 12 feet in doing that, they have to follow OSHA guidance. Who's the high school art teacher? So, you know, that means, you know, if you're getting on a scaffolding and there are certain height restrictions, they gotta follow. We gotta follow that, sorry. You know. No, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I'd like and, and, and when I brought these questions to him, he based where's where he's sitting right now is he's gonna be able to put that information together, but not until the board says yes, yes, you can do this project here on the building. Right. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. So the way I kind of figured it is to present it to you guys like this is a great idea, let's at least maybe tell him, yes, we're willing to do this. But here's what we need to know first before we actually say let's move forward. They have to have a safety plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to have a proposal. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not her check with Ike on that too? Since they're yeah, yeah. And see what. The, and we're going to, it's going to have to be. What we would need to make sure we don't have a liability on here. It's going to have to be done by the schools. What he's going to have to get it through his board, through the district. 
because I would much rather it be under the district's eye cream yeah. than our eye cream, right? Right, but so. it's not coming from the school, it's coming from the VFW hall. Correct. That's, that's who's doing it. The, oh, with, the county gave them money and then a thrift store gave them money for it. Okay. So. But with the high, I mean, he's who is the artist? I think he's partnering with the high school. He told me that it was the high school teacher that, art teacher that did that mural. That's the artist. Okay. That did this mural. And I apologize, I don't know his name. Is it still Josh Nags? Or is it somebody so. else now? I don't think it is anymore. I, I mean, I I'm, sure. I'm all for it. We just need to sit there and work. They have to work around that, that okay. problem. That's, that's really. So yeah. that's that specifically what you all need to see in a proposal from them. If I could give him that, that would be helpful. Right. And then, he, and then he can go gather all that stuff. Right. Because if he sits there and, and does the. I deal with a lot of the stuff in the, when it gets in the scaffolding and it's over 12 feet height, blah, blah, blah. They have right. to have safety harnesses and stuff like that. Yeah. Once they get down below that height, that's fine. But yet, they're, you're dealing with a county building, so they have to sit there and fall. It puts them oh, more in the spotlight mm -hmm. on a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So as long as they just basically have, and they can sit there and take a course, or that may have somebody that can be lead it, you know, to where they make sure that the right individual is up there. Right, yes. You know, yeah. um, or the, whether the artist is up there that he's just had the safety tie mm -hmm. on it, you know, and that's really not it. You know. There's ways to work around it, but we need to make sure that they're yeah, on top of their safety. Plus, you have to have a, uh, they're gonna have to have a safety plan, um, meaning that if there was a incident what, how do they, what, is it, what do they do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they need a safety plan. You want a proposal from them that includes a safety plan, whether or not they're gonna need a permit, whether or not they've been even checked in. Yeah, that's that. where the, they're gonna have to check with the city. Yeah, yeah. 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 who's gonna carry their insurance? Yeah, who's liability yeah. and yeah. risk management, those yeah. are the right. three things I have. Yeah. Anything else that you guys would like to see in this proposal? And he has said that he will come and talk to you guys. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. No, that would be great to do, I just, we need a more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'd like to sit there and go, yeah, well, I'll afford it for the one side. Let's do the other side. You know, but, for the parking lot, you know. But we also have to know what kind of product he intends to Oh, yeah. Good point. You have to, so the longevity? Yes. You also have to look at the, the SDS. That's just concrete there. That's a slab of concrete on the wall. There's metal on it. A, I think it's a metal. It looks like it's wood, but it's not. I think it's a metal. That siding for the library there on the yeah I'm pretty sure that's metal. It's metal at a certain point, but then below that it's it's concrete, isn't it? Well, I know concrete yeah, for, for the for the wall um, and the wood that's underneath the metal. Because if, if you're if you're painting the rib steel, that's going to look that's going to be interesting to do, right? You're going to you want a completely different product for rib steel than you're going to right. yes. for painting a cinder block section. So we'll want we'll to know what section two. Can we get BF builders to look at that corner? You know, because sure, it's to that. you know this is me hearing secondhand from Sandy and and then talking to Terry and being like, oh yeah, in the summertime the gap in that window is like two inches, but in the winter it closes back up. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah, not talking about this tissue? Right. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Stick to the tissue paper. Okay. All right, Terry. Okay, so, so anything awesome. else that you guys would like to see in a proposal from them? You're talking about quality of the products. You're talking about safety plan, liability, who's going to take care of the liability, and the permits, anything else? Yeah, the, anything, that if they're painting or whatever, that any of the SDS sheets, that's the safety data sheets, because of the chemicals, stuff like that, if they're using. It's just one of those things. It's, the state goes through it, and, you know, the county goes through it. I, he keeps telling me that he's the point person for it, but it, I feel like it would be smart to have somebody down in black and white that this is the person who's in charge of this project. Yes. Well, you can, we can. I haven't heard yet. Yeah. Well, you, you, we can still basically even hire. Um, you can bring on uh, BF builders to be your your general overseeing the project. contractor for the project. Only if they can afford it, unless we want to contribute to it. What I'm what I'm getting at is so that we can basically hire the BF builders as the as our general to oversee what they're what they're doing as the construction aspect of it. 
so it's coming out of our pocket. But it's but it, you're you're doing you're making sure that everything is going fine. It's that you know you you're basically hiring that. I mean, even if we have the receipt, it will just have them sign a six foot stack of waivers before they take the paintbrush. Yeah, if they can give us a written proposal on how they can cover our concerns there, we can take a look at it. And for the most part, if they, you know, cover most of those little elements like that, the insurance, you know, everybody's going to be, yeah. okay. it's going to reduce question. the risk management aspect. Okay. So that's what I'd like to do is be able to go back and tell them, here's what they'd like to see. Um, so if, if between now and when I talk to him again, if you guys can think of anything else that you're like, well, wait, we need this on there too. I'm happy to talk to him and add it. Um, at this point, so he, what he said to me is he can't start doing all this gathering and writing down until we actually say, yes, at this point, we're saying yes, you can use the building. One of the other things is the cleanup. So yeah. we'll just add the, let's, the, the let's, cleanup mix. Let's say we are interested in hearing more. How's that? It's not a, it's not a no. Yeah, like the idea. But it's not, not a no. <laughs> we just need to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. So tentatively, can we say that? Yeah. And if he can meet our, our requirements, for sure. But I, I think the other thing we should think about too is the longevity of this piece. Because you know, if you're painting on metal in you know five years, if that looks terrible, then we're cleaning it off, which is kind of a failure of both ends. Okay, so I do you have see that what I'm, too. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, I do. If we're going to, you know, <laughs> we I don't want to get out there in two years and have to take it off because it's all flaked off and looks terrible. Right, yes. right. Because then we're, we're insulting the whole idea of the process. And, and yeah. you know, he's, he's going to have to come to one of our meetings and it's going to be advertised. That's what he's there for. And that's. Yeah, he's happy to do that. Yeah, he, offered, exactly. he offered to come to this one and yeah. I said it's kind of too early yet, but yep. yeah, he's more than. And we'll take to public comment on, at that meeting. So he's going to need to be prepared okay. for that. I'll tell him that too. We will, you know, because yeah. that's this is definitely not the kind of thing that we're gonna. No, and we're it's, we're gonna have somebody slap down a mural without the public's input on on the kind of art on the side mm -hmm. of the building there. Yeah, right. Well, it's, it's, it's the, exactly. the intention is to go with the memorial park. Yeah, right. Yes. No, exactly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. No, and there's there's you can't even say you know like there should be no argument against it. of course there's an argument there's always an right. argument against it right <laughs> but we can weigh that and balance it and hear from everybody and, and right i would much rather do that rather than hear from on the back side sorry all right all right Okay, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll either vote on that, I can just let them decide. Yeah, yeah, they should sell the market insurance and how they be addressed. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our director's report. Director's report. Um, I have quite a few things to go over, so I'm going to let the um, statistics kind of stand for themselves since you guys all have that in your packets already. Okay. Suffice it to say, we still have lots of people coming in, coming out, lots of material going out. Um, yeah, so that part of it is going all good. Um, I wanted to let you know that Randy Waddell came and talked to me about the roof. Okay. Because that was the next step. We were going to do. Uh, the museum, I guess, is having trouble with their roof as well. So right. BF Builders is trying to get a company called CNR Roofing to come up here and look at the museum. And Randy said, and I will, if he's going to come up and look at that, I'll, I'll incorporate him no. coming up and looking at that too. Um, so he was going to okay. get a hold of them. Yeah. yeah. And the plan is the same. You know, it's just that edge there where it's soft. And he said, that's the same problem the museum has. It's where those drains are and that water sits. So it's, it's had an effect in the meantime. So I'm, I've been bugging them and they know that we're, we're on their list. And CNR Roofing, he said, are, is, are the folks that did the hatchery roof. Okay. So it's a, a well-known, been around for a while kind of company. They know how to get here. Uh, up there, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, Amy and I are going down to Coeur d'Alene to meet with ICFOs doing a tech training where they talk about cataloging and 
really great stuff. So hopefully we're gonna learn some good stuff down there. Um, we have Clay from ICFL is coming in June. That's that other email I included in the packets. Um, he was at the director summit meeting and he was super knowledgeable. Everybody in the room was very impressed with his knowledge. He's not a lawyer but he's been doing open meeting stuff for so long that every question anybody shot at him, we had an answer for him. So, and that's just a small part of his knowledge base. So I think, I definitely want to go and sit and talk to him and so does he, but I think any of us that can make it would really benefit from meeting with him. So and when is this? It's in June. He's got like three different dates that he's coming up. Um, and basically it's first come, first serve. Uh, he's here from June 24th to June 27th, and he's doing one of those things where, it, where, he, where he's coming up from Boise and he's trying to hit as many libraries as he can. So, but he did say he was willing to come all the way up here. So, the sooner we give him a set date, the more guaranteed we are to actually be on his schedule for that particular time, instead of him trying to fit us in around other people. So, if you guys want to think about it, let me know. Let me know where you're gonna be in June and <laughs> whether mornings or afternoons work best for you. That was on the list. Um, uh, also wanted to let you know, I don't know if I mentioned this at the last meeting, I know I've talked to a couple of you about it, but our downstairs page, Maya Anderson, um, we've been looking for another part-time person and Terry let me know that Maya's actually over 18. She's a great worker very personable, very sweet, really good worker. So I basically sat down with her and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? She thought about it for a day and came back and said, yeah, I'd like to do that. So we've since moved her upstairs. She's been training for about two weeks now and she's brilliant. You tell her something once and she's got it. So cool. yeah, so that's, that's a nice, more balance. And then we were able to hire um, Rachel Stella back as our second page. She worked for us last summer for a while, and she had stopped working for us because she was doing online courses, and she wanted to be able to concentrate on her. And then about a month ago, she came and said, I'm about done with school, and do you have hours? So that whole thing was kind of kismet and worked out really, really great. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so we're pretty stoked with that. And she doesn't, Maya doesn't have plans right now to go off to college anytime soon. She, very happy with the area and she's very invested in a lot of different things here. So I think we might be able to keep her for a while. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> Kismet, the only the only person who wasn't happy was Terry because I took her away from Terry. <laughs> 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 um, this coming Saturday we have a gentleman coming in and presenting a biodiversity program. We've been advertising for it and we sent out invitations to several different people we thought would be interested in. It. He's basically a, a bee guy, but he started it after he retired, just kind of got interested in that aspect of it. And since then, he's developed a program that he runs around to all different libraries and presents his program. He's got a website. He's done these community surveys where he has people in the community. Did you meet him? Have you talked to him? I, have, I know uh, you and Amy have talked about yeah. it. Um, basically, the community survey is he has sheets of paper that he hands out and you go out in your yard and you say I saw this many these and this many those and this many flowers and you put that all together and send it to him and then he takes that information and incorporates it into his basically his platform that he's doing just on his own because he's interested in it and so he'll be there on Saturday I think it's going to be a really interesting program so and I think Um, we have an upcoming writers and read contest that homeschool moms, it's really cute. They called us and said, we're so sorry we missed this. And we were like, what, what, what did you miss? You know, the writers thing. <laughs> what writers thing? The one you had on Saturday. This is the Boundary County Library. Were you thinking of the Bonner County Library? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, Sandpoint had a, had a contest and they were really excited about it. And since they missed it down at Sandpoint, we were like, but hey, you could do something like that. <laughs> that was Greg's event. Yeah, yeah okay. Boundary, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, yeah and they were really excited right about it. They were sorry they missed it, and so it, it, it worked out for everybody because now we get to have one Yay. too. So yeah, we're excited about it too. So that's coming up next month. We're going to be doing that next month. Oh. Yeah, it'll be fun. We're excited about it, and it's open to the public. It's not just homeschoolers. It's it's but there's limited spaces <clears throat> because we're just going to do it for an hour. So. Okay. And I think that's it, unless you guys have any specific questions for me. There's a lot going on. Yeah. It sounded like we had good results with the Battle of the Books at uh, Coeur d'Alene. We got second. Uh, 12 teams, uh, one of the Bonner's groups got second, yeah. so that was good. Cool. And they get to go on now. There's one more big contest that they get to go do. So we, Julie did a lot of that work, yeah. a lot of that work. And we were hosting it for most of the season. So, yeah. And that's all, we were hosting it. We really was doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep riding that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anyone have anything else for Lynn? No? Okay. Okay, review of the March financials. We're halfway through our fiscal year. And <clears throat> in total, we're 42% on our expenditures, so we're definitely within our, within our budget. Uh, anyone have any comment on anything? In regards to the uh, statement of the expenditures and revenues, are you finding your your um, you know your line items here are pretty accurate as to what you're wanting to spend in those? For the most part, Just yes. Looking forward to. To you know, to our to our budget later on next year. Oh, I'm so excited to start it again. Yes, <laughs> next month. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just really. I mean, it seems it seems like everything's pretty pretty straightforward where it is, but yeah. All right. Kevin Hangley. No. Maybe. No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I guess we're ready for motion for adjournment. If not, someone else to for further discussion. Um, motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Motion. All opposed? Hearing none. Motion carried. Adjourned. Yeah.